This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com and Netflix.com. So you guys want to you guys want to hear about my first time? No. <laughs> Not really. I've got it wrapped here in plastic. Oh. <laughs> it's just a book. Oh, oh I was somewhere that's, else. I was, yeah. Mm. I was, yeah. the video show from the comic book discussion site ifanboy.com I am Josh <laughs> and I am Ron I'm Connor it's our 100th episode Woo! Woo! high five the 100 yeah who would have thought it's really an I'm ambiguous me. number if you think about it it kind of is okay well, it's 100 it's a it's lot 100. it's a lot that's it's a lot of freaking shows three yeah. digits that's a lot of freaking shows oh my god so <laughs> it just hit me. We thought with the hundredth episode, we'd a lot of stuff to talk about. We we celebrate our, our anniversary, well, not really anniversary, but our, our, our cent- centennial, centennial our by centennial. looking back into the past and, and looking back at what it is we love about comics and how we got to this point. The sun shone off her hair. It was a lovely a light. And day. Different thing so, he's oh, talking about. Sorry, I was reminiscing. So we we're going to reminisce about some of our old comic purchases and what really got us loving comics. Specifically. Uh, specifically, what specifically got us loving comics so much? Specifically. Specifically. Our first comics. S- sort of. Sort of. Because yeah. because we we it's funny because when you talk about your first comics, uh, um, I, at least the way I define it is it's a little it's a little um, there's. There, I had comics growing up. I had a Spider-Man in French that I got in mm. France some, when I was there with my family once that I read for years. I had a bunch of Superman, Batman, things it's like that. very slow but, reader. But I had a G.I. <laughs> Joe comic, yeah. but they, they, weren't, they didn't get me into comics. Right. But for me, there was one issue that got me into comics. And I always feel like I'm the one always talking about this. I feel like I've told the story a million times, so I apologize if you heard it. Um, I'm more interested in hearing their yeah, story. Yeah, but it was probably like on but, the audio show three years yeah, ago. probably. So. Um, but so the comic that got me into comic books was uh, Excalibur number 19. And I actually don't have the issue. It's in my storage unit. But I have the trade paperback um, Excalibur volume 3 that it appears in. Mm-hmm. Excalibur number 19. Um, Excalibur was a X-Men spinoff book. Uh, it, it was started by Chris Claremont and Alan Davis, although Alan Davis was off at this point. He, I, I believe Rick Leonard, Leonardi drew this issue. Mm. Um, I want to double check that. Yes, it was Rick Leonardi. Um, and it was a spinoff, uh, spin-off uh, series that took uh, Nightcrawler, Phoenix, Rachel Summers, not Jean Grey, but Rachel Summers, and uh, Kitty Pride, and put them in England and teamed them with Captain Britain and his girlfriend Megan. And they formed Excalibur. Excalibur. <laughs> and, um, with the sword. Yeah, with the sword. Because uh, at the time, uh, Kitty and Rachel and Nightcrawler were separated from the X-Men, and they thought they died, and so they didn't know what to do with themselves, and they were in England, and they met up with Captain Britain, and they decided to stay there and become a team. Um, so Excalibur number 19, the, the story goes, I'm sitting in sixth grade in home ec class, and there's a kid sitting next to me, Eric Van Egg. If you're out there, if you're watching, Eric, <laughs> hope, you're, hope you're doing well. Um, and um, Eric Van Egg is sitting next to me, and he's not paying attention to the sewing lesson that we're learning because <laughs> it's fucking sewing. And um, I lean over and he's reading a comic book. I'm like, oh, I'm like, what are you reading? He's like, oh, Excalibur. I'm like, really? And now what was interesting about this issue is, is that I love Excalibur because of this issue, but really this was my entry point into the X-Men because um, as you can see on the cover, um, it says Excalibur and the whole Excalibur team has been defeated by Jamie Braddock, uh, Captain Britain's uh, crazy older brother. And it says not exactly the he's X- a bikini wearing pirate. <laughs> Let me finish. It says not... <laughs> Look at the bikini! I'm going to get to that. <laughs> it says not exactly the X-Men, and has got the X-Men coming at him. And so, the X. Yeah, is used as the yeah. X-Men. So what happened is, is that um, Jamie Braddock is Captain Britain's crazy brother, and yes, he's wearing a bikini, and he's got big hoopty things. Turns out he was a race car driver who somehow had the ability, has the mutant power to... Um, he sees everything like strings, like the fabric of space and time, Street and theory. he can pull them and manipulate, basically, <clears throat> reality. And what's happened is that he's defeated Excalibur, and Rachel is hurt, Captain Britain is under his spell, um, Kitty just left, and really all that's, ah. left, all that's left is Megan. Um, and Megan is a shapeshifter. And so Phoenix is hurt and can't do anything, but she has a telepathic link with Megan. So she says, listen, Jamie knows how to defeat us, but he doesn't know how to defeat the X-Men. And I know the X-Men, so I'm going to telepathically t- make you into the X-Men. And so she used her shapeshifting to make Megan... She first turns into Wolverine to, to use his senses to find him. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then Jamie shoots at her, and she falls off the building, and then she turns into Longshot to do the acrobatics. And then she turns into Dazzler to shoot him. Does and, shapeshifting bring on the powers, too? Yeah, well, that was the thing. And there's this, there's this whole kind of... 
Megan's thinking, she's like, where do I end and this and Havoc begin? <laughs> and it becomes very kind of kind of heavy for a sixth grader. But um of course, but basically, Claremont. He was but, like, there's space that doesn't have words in it. But, but basically <laughs> what basically what it was is it was it was as textbook of an introduction to the X-Men at that time sure. as there was, and I couldn't get enough of it. I must have re read and reread over and over every the the whole, you know, turning into Wolverine mm -hmm. and then each one because it was, was like this I had only known of the X-Men from that computer game. Do you remember that X-Men computer game? It was out in like the late 80s. No, I remember. I didn't but have a computer until the late 90s. I vaguely, I vaguely knew of these characters, but I didn't know who they were or anything like that. And this completely tapped into a level, uh, aspect of my imagination that I didn't even know I was interested in. Right. And so I let he let me read the comic during class, and then immediately after school I ran to Art Stationery Store where they had a spinner rack, and I bought this issue. Ran home, read it again, then ran back to the store and got Wolverine, got Uncanny X Men, got, ran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which you wouldn't that? believe because it's a little chubby. Um, so uh, it's not a looking back on it. Does it hold up now? Oh uh, yeah. Um, Leonardi's art isn't anywhere nearly as good as Alan Davis. I went. I finally found a comic book store and I went back and bought all the back issues and was blown away by Alan Davis's art. I just loved mm -hmm. it. Um, so Leonardi's art is good at times, but not as good. It's Claremont in. It's it's. This is the apex of Claremont. This is like 1988, 89. Um, yes, it's a little wordy, but it's really really good. Um, it kind of holds up. I mean, I, I, admittedly for me, there's a lot of sentimental factor. Like you mentioned, Jamie Braddock is in a white Speedo for no reason, as far as I can tell, and like gypsy earrings. And he like, looks like a big gay pirate. He, no, he did. He told, yeah. Well, the thing is, the majority of the issue, he doesn't appear like that. He, he used to be a race car driver, so he's all debonair, and he's got this race car jacket. And then when Kitty, Kitty finally breaks through and finds him, and he's sitting like, like this in the Speedo with like, and he's got figures of the X-Men and he's playing with them. It's like this kind of crazy. So it was other superpowers you know, to make everything awkward. Yeah, pretty much. Right. He was just kind of hanging. He was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but I love this issue and I will love it for all time to come. So. Sure, well, that's yeah. important. Yeah. So. Let me get back mine. Thanks to GoDaddy.com for sponsoring iFanboy. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. Dot com names starting as low as one ninety nine plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Don't miss the GoDaddy.com holiday shopping spree. Between now and December 15th, every purchase of $50 or more automatically qualifies you for a chance to win a $1,000 cash prize. Visit GoDaddy.com today and use the coupon code iFanboy and save 10% off your purchase. I couldn't decide. I don't remember exactly which one my first. I know that my first comic was one of these two. And this is these are them. You don't remember? I don't remember which one what it are they? was. Uh, Wolverine number one. Ooh, not... Claremont Miller, though. We'll Claremont, the ongoing series. Claremont Busima, the series that is not going on today because they renumbered the one. Right. Because this would be volume two, I believe. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Sorry. It's an ad for the Cobra Hiss tank. Which, by the way, cost $4. <laughs> no way, really? $4 for the Hiss tank. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right. Three fifty for the fridge, which I never got. I sent mine away. Never this is not an old ads mini. Oh, God. It's so good. Um, and th this is a good Wolverine comic Listen. even today. I reread it. Um, I went back through. It's the Patch era. Yeah, when Andrew Four. Yeah, Andrew Four. I didn't know what any of that stuff was. I just knew that he was a tough guy, and he went in. And he kicked some pilots' butts. No, some pirates because he was saving pilots. Pirates like, everywhere. Pirates had had hijacked a plane and had taken all of the crew hostage. So he went in there because he knew Somebody. one of the people who was on the plane. Yeah. Um, this is a great era in Wolverine. I think that gets forgotten about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is when his, his solo series, the ongoing series, it was kind of, um, Miller and, and Claremont had done the done the mini series, the limited series that w that took him to Japan and mm -hmm. brought in all that kind of Asian influence. This just further expanded it. It, yep. it, it, it took that. Um, God, look at this art. It took Samo. that. Yeah. There's there's places in it where where it's really good, and there's places in it where it's really hacky. Well, Busan was actually pretty old at this point too, so like some of it doesn't hold up, but overall there's some really great stuff in it. Sort of by the end, it gets kind of kind of iffy. He's but not patch in this. No, in this no, he, no. At a certain point in the end, he has his patch on. I think. Oh, really? For some reason, he's he decides. He's not called that. Yeah, for some reason during this ongoing series, he decides to don an eye patch yeah, he's and become patch a, different, on. a different person. Yeah. And he, well, what's weird is patch. what's weird is that like his hair is full on in this. Yeah. There's yeah. no like trying to Big make it look slightly right, realistic. Yeah. Like, yeah. and he's got that cross hat shady thing on his eye for no reason yeah. at all um one of the things that i thought was really interesting in this it was in the middle of it he says i don't know where i got these powers and i don't much care and i was like that's 
That's the right. essence of Wolverine. Yeah. That's and, Wolverine and, done right. And when it changed and it was all about, well, let's figure out who he is and what it is, I think that's he really so lost yeah. something. That's yeah. a beautiful John Byrne yeah, that's, uh, Wolverine that's, on the So back. what is it, do you remember what it is I brought up? That drew you to that when you were a kid? It's a really good introduction and there's a slight thread of what happens next. Um, and I, for some reason, I don't remember why, but like the, the character was just starting to have a cachet at that point. And so it was kind of like... Do you think that's know. why you picked it up in the first place? I don't know. Was it the claws? I think it was a great cover. Yeah. It's a great cover. He's standing on a pile of bodies. <laughs> yeah. It's black, and he's just like... It just looks it looks modern. Or... It's fascinating, because did Buscema do the cover? Yes. yes. Because um, cause Silvestri, Mark Silvestri, took over after Buscema left. Uh -huh. and what a, that was what a so... switch. Well, no. this looks These bodies look very Silvestri. I, I, I remember when the it. artist switched. There's yeah. two things that happened. Is Sinkevich, I love the Sinkevich did a couple in the middle, and yeah. I was not ready for Sinkevich. And I was like, what the hell is this crap? <laughs> I, re I remember specifically, like, it was the Sabretooth one. Yeah. Um, and, and, and John Buscema I actually knew because I had bought, um, I I'd, I'd had the How to Draw Comics in Marvel way. Yeah. Yep. And he did that, so I knew that name because I'd had that way before I ever read comics. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, Amazing Spider-Man number 315, Todd McFarlane, David Michelini, uh, I bought this off a of spinner rack at Lavertier's, which was a drugstore down the street. It's the drugstore, stationery um, store, spinner rack. And and it, this was the first artist who I ever fell in love with. Yep. Uh, Todd McFarlane on the. I, immediately, I was like, I have never seen anything like this. No. This is amazing. Um, what's it's, really it's an amazing, Spider-Man. What's really great <laughs> about this is it's that I went through and I read it again. And web of. It's really good. I actually really enjoyed reading it. That was and a good era. That the whole... cover is him fighting Hydra Man. I'd never heard of Hydra Man. <laughs> His and... massive hair. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, the it's, hair is full on. It's a little set. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Hydra Man is in this for two or three pages, I think. And That's Venom. the fight. No, and the story is about a lodger who is staying with Aunt May because she had... Uh, a room to let? Yeah, several. She was running like a boarding house at the time. And he, uh, he had a gambling problem. He was an old guy in a wheelchair and he was all pissed off and he was stealing money from her because he got in trouble with loan sharks and it's sort of about teaching them him a lesson but also being... It was really like sort of a very small story. And so, really but, so but the cover's got a big, huge Hydra Man and it's got... Mm -hmm. And Venom is back. So are they not in it? Or? The first, first couple pages is about Venom breaking out of the vault, which was the prison back then. And, and Venom was interesting then because he, he was it's talking to himself. He's like, yes, it's always sad when we have to kill an innocent. <laughs> like because he had to kill one of the guards, and, and but he felt bad about it. McFarlane's Venom, great, it's fantastic, Amazing. really scary. Spider Man, and too. Spider Man is great. Yeah, too. no, it's yeah. it's all good. actually. And one of the things that struck out to me is this: is that uh, they're married in this, mm, as a and it was really good. <laughs> no, it, it actually really worked because uh, neither of them had a job, and and at that point, Mary Jane was being blacklisted, and she couldn't get any modeling or acting jobs. So they had they were living with Aunt May because she was a communist. Something like that. They had no money. See, you know, she was pissed off. Like somebody fell in love with her, and she spurned him, yeah. and he stopped her from getting all the work. So it was all of that Spider-Man drama, and they, it felt like a young couple who like didn't quite know what to do next. Yeah. And the legs are ridiculous. If she was now, she'd just get a website. She'd have a yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, the McFarlane, the McFarlane webbing legs yeah. poses was. I mean, no, no, they from were revolutionary. Yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah. So from a, I mean, from a anatomy standpoint who knows if it's correct but it, no, it's got it that but it was it didn't matter it didn't matter at all it's just exciting it just jumps out at you i imagine seeing this was a lot like people who saw kirby for the first time you know like it was this guy all of a sudden the pages are like oh yeah um really good stuff i mean it does live a little in the 80s but the, i went back and i bought the issues before it to a certain point i couldn't afford them yeah. after that they were really expensive for a long time yes yes they were did you have how to marvel the, the video no i, I didn't. had i had that too Stanley. Stanley man. Um, yeah, no, I remember. I remember these issues. They were. They were. They, this is a great run. This is before mm -hmm. the Spider-Man adjective list. Yeah, this yes. is. Yeah, it well, led, led to that's, this. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. when I stopped reading. Yeah, yeah. actually, when I, I got to that point. So, well, so it's one of these two. You don't. Yeah, know I don't know exactly which one. Yeah, this one's autographed by Chris Claremont. Yeah, Wait, if you if you bought them all when they came out, would it be the one that's the oldest? Well, I bought this off a spinner rack, which had a bunch of issues on it, so I don't know how. What year is that? November '88. This is May '89, so it's got to be Wolverine. It's got to be Wolverine. It's got to be. Must be. Yeah, Wolverine's got to be the first one. Wow. You remember, your childhood just got shattered. Wow, it did. Yeah, well, <laughs> look at this one stapled badly. The cover wraps yeah. around. Your let's, first Let's note that, that this is a dollar, and this is a dollar fifty. The dollar fifty, the paper in that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. see this one's yeah. all yellowy, and this yeah. one's holding up yeah. really yeah. well. Yeah, this one's great. Yeah. That's it's not going to make it much longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, Put that in the back of the board. You need to get All right, so while Josh that. backs some boards, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring iFanboy. With Netflix, you can rent over 100,000 titles online, including Blu-ray titles with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. Plans start from only $4.99, and as a new member, you can get a free two-week trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com iFanboy to check it out. 
Oh, those were some fantastic goods and services. Connor. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't tell you what my first comic was because I've I've had them since before I was five. And he did a three, lot of drugs four. as a three-year-old. It's just impossible to tell you. What I can tell you, though, is... Well, the first comic you remember, right? I mean, like the... no, no, I remember comics, you know, in, right. in, fifth, in, in first grade. No, kindergarten, we're passing G.I. Joe's around the... Right, the... no, but the one that got you into it. Kind of like, you know, I can't. Like, there's, there, there were always comics there. I don't remember okay. what they were. But when I was in fifth grade, my family and I took a drive across the country on a summer vacation trip. And... Um, when you're when you're 10 years old and drive across country, you're not really interested in seeing the sights because oh. you're too young for to really appreciate all that stuff. Those road, trip, I, I those road trips are hell. Yeah, I couldn't read. I got car sick. So um, we were it was somewhere in the south southwest. I think it was like Arizona or something. We stopped at a 7-Eleven, and this is similar to the spinning rack, and they just had all the, they had like a whole like bank of comics, yeah. and. I was looking, and then back, were smiling by there. Like, yeah. and back then they were kind of they were they were on top of each other. So you really only got the top part. And all I saw was Batman versus Guy Gardner. I didn't know who Guy Gardner was. I had no conception. All I saw was Batman. He was my favorite guy. So I bought this, and I saw they had the very next issue also, yeah. five and six. These are this is the original ones. They're falling apart. And it completely. says it had to happen. It had to happen. Well, if you Batman read the series, you knew it had to happen. But I did. These are the Kevin McGuire and Demetrius Justice League. These are the, this is the original ones that survived the trip somehow. But. Um, Did you draw it's, on it's all ripped all? and everything. Uh, I don't think I drew in these. I drew in later ones. But um, I love that. What this? What I was just old enough, around ten, to really. You draw in? No, I drew like more shooting oh, yeah. and like more wounds, like you know, like more blood. Yeah. <laughs> Your blood Actually, the worst one I ever drew in was was the was the Batman Year One issues. Oh. I drew I, I drew in those. Anyway. Oh, yeah. um, I don't think you got it then reading them. <laughs> I don't think it affected you the way it should have. No. Um, <laughs> so well, this is what this this is like the first modern books I remember reading, where I, where, where even as a ten year old, realizing, wow, this is something more going on here. Yeah. These are, you know, the art is a whole new level. It's kind of like Josh seeing the the McFarlane, the McFarlane art. Yeah. And Kevin McGuire. Yeah. I mean, there was the, no other comic like Kevin McGuire's at the time. When you're when you're reading comics in the '80s, and they were some of them drawn very simply or rudimentarily, mm -hmm. it's like it's very much like McGuire. You're like, whoa, what is going on here? And that's, I think one of the, I think McFarlane affects your 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 art style. I think you've got a you've got like a appreciation for McFarlane, and mm -hmm. he he pushes your buttons. You like more cartoony or more rounded, you know? McGuire and guys like the Alan Davis and, and and Gary Frank will always be my my art style mm -hmm. because I think because of these books because I read them when I was ten. I read these two issues about forty five times that 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 trip because I had you all. You were just reading them over. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've read Excalibur number nineteen over and over yep. and over again. I don't think I did that. I went and got others. That's what I did. And well, the thing was, this is this is this is a middle of an arc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it six ends on a cliffhanger. So is this. And six, uh, six ends up, but I'm on, I'm trapped in a car. Yeah. And six ended on a cliffhanger, and I didn't read seven for about five years. Really? Because I never. It was these are by the time I got around to going yeah. to comic shops and things, these are back issues and they're expensive. So I never yeah. until I had money, I never knew how they beat the Gray Man. What's funny is that I I didn't. I never read the beginning of this Venom arc. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I, I, this is three fifteen. I remember going back. I got to three eleven. That was as much as I could afford going back. Right. Anything before that, from three hundred to three ten, and the ten before that, the two nineties, were way, 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 way too expensive back then. Right. Absolutely. Because yeah. that was the original. The speculate, and you get in the speculation era. Seventy-five yeah. cents, nineteen eighty-seven. Well, this was a dollar, so this was like the. Right. Remember that. And then yeah, they the had jump. the different tiers of quality, and like yeah. mm -hmm. like Wolverine was a buck fifteen, so was Punisher War Journal. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. So the story of this is is there's a guy, Gray Man, who who's sort of like the Purple Man, kind of. He, 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 he controls your mind. And what's interesting is this is the this is the not ready for prime time players team. So you've got guys like Guy Gardner and Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. And as a kid, I I knew them, but I didn't really know them. I knew Batman. I knew Captain Marvel. Uh, but really, that was it. So I was learning all these new characters also were and the worst Black Canary outfit ever. Well, it was it was ever. it was yeah, it's pretty horrible. Get physical. <laughs> and I know briefly Hal Jordan's in it with his little scar with his little sweater tied around his his shoulders. And listen, I've got to get back to the club. <laughs> you know, there's something fascinating about these old comics, and this is more kind of you know talking about old comics. Um, looking at the letters pages, yeah, they printed full names and addresses. Yes, yeah. They do. Up so, to that point in time, too. Yes. Yeah. So, like I see in the 60s so, comics. Meh. Ediberto Soriano Jr. at 294 Stanhope Street, apartment 3L in Brooklyn. <laughs> About half of the letters were from New York City. Let's go yeah. find <laughs> yeah. um, That'd be weird. Uh, so, it's even funnier. This person signed it A Critic, but then gave their address. <laughs> so what's interesting is what we lose now, sort of, is, is the, the quest to fill out your, 
your storyline because from from years my goal was to get the, the beginning of the storyline and yep. then the end of it to I figure out what happened issue. the first right. the first justice League, yeah. but I bought that um, this just so affected me and this is so one of my favorite runs not just because of quality wise but because it really was one of the things that leapt me forward mm-hmm. you know when you're when you're nine that, eight nine you're, you're a casual reader when you get to ten and you start reading stuff like this and you, your brain gets it yep. then you take a step forward and you're like wow now I'm going to go all the that time that may have been the story behind 315 now that I yeah. think about it maybe that was the it was deal. the leap forward yeah. well it was the year after that so you well, may have I've never that. thought for, to look at the date <laughs> for, for me for me, what it was was that it was the it was like I always knew about comics I always knew they existed all this kind of stuff but it was this idea of this universe or this mm-hmm. this world that existed in where there was people and relationships and stories and stuff like that and then, then that need to get the back mm-hmm. issues and the fill and the catch up and to get everything and, and it was you know it was well, eye opening and it's also almost, almost a perfect store for me because I was trapped with them for, for, for the summer yeah. and I could read them so often that I was able to pick up all the nuance and I picked and up no stuff I couldn't get. No other store had comics anywhere in the entire United States. Well, you know, you, 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 your parents oh, aren't... Uh, we went from New York to San Francisco and back. Wow. Jeez, that's crazy. Um, Man, I went crazy just going to the Pennsylvania Dutch country. <laughs> that, that trip drove me nuts. We, we didn't go anywhere. That was so boring. It was so but, uh, boring. I mean, these, these Sorry, are, these are the special. Thing. I don't it's like a half a day. Yeah. I know, but I was thinking about it now like it's nothing. Well, we were there for like three days. It was, uh, it's like all, it's There's like, a lot of love to do with Pennsylvania Dutch oh, country. Yeah, look at the horses. And you were just like, I want to watch TV and play video games. No, not, not even video games. At that point, I want to play, uh, go on my computer. Yeah, so well, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, these, I'm not really a back issue guy, but I always. I want to always have these two these two issues. It's it's so funny because you talk about being a back issue guy and like I start I like I started and then I immediately became a back issue guy because it was only like a month after discovering this when I'd got when I'd bought all the comics on the spinner rack. I'm like, when are you gonna get more? <laughs> and they're like, we get them the third Tuesday of the month or whatever. And I was just like, oh. And I went and I found the comic store and found all that. And I was like, oh. and that's when I started working and getting a job and getting money to go buy the back issues because I was instantly you know. Ravenous. You can read stories about all of our first shops on iFanboy. Yeah, yes, we're talking about yeah, search my first shop. It's yeah, all there. So um, if you want to share um, what your first comic was or, or what got you into comics, you can email us at contactifanboy.com and let us know. Or you can call our voicemail line at one eight 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 fanboys, which is three two six two six nine seven. Leave us a voicemail. And that site that I just referred you to was ifanboy.com, where there's going to be a discussion on this. You can tell us about your first issues. Uh, of comics. No, not, <laughs> I, was, I was shaky. I, um, uh, anyway. Your first time um, with comics. Yeah. Only comics. Abandonment issues. Yeah, that's all we want to hear about. Uh, so go there and do that. And yeah, these are good. I, I had a whole box of like from around that time that I could have been like, ooh, this, ooh. And, yeah. What I love is I'm the only person who likes this issue. <laughs> I've never met another person like, oh yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's just, it's yeah. just, it's just People mine. know these. Yeah, it's just mine. It's all mine. It's comics. Good. Go read. They're in trade now. Go read them. I watch Back to the Future, and now all the time I want to do Duck Brown. <gasps> <laughs> Doc, you're not going to believe this. I don't believe it. We watched, um, Christina really wanted to watch Back to the Future 2. We were watching Back to the Future, and it doesn't hold up. And Back to the Future 2 is not a good movie. And no, so, it holds up. It holds no. up. It totally holds up. Not compared to Watch it last night. But yeah, compared to the first one, it's it, like, the whole plot is contrived. And it's just a very, the whole chicken That's the point thing of it, though. Nowhere, and, but but um, the best is at the very end, when Marty comes back. Like they, the car goes off, and then Marty comes around the corner in the leather jacket. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd's reactions. <laughs> I mean, like the acting of the characters yeah. is better in that one because yeah. you know them better. Yeah. I don't know, it's fun. Tom Wilson cool in that movie. But Tom Wilson is great in that movie. He's the best thing in that movie, but just the story is really bad. So.